Today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo, and this video is a compilation of tips and tricks to help you edit more efficiently and get better results. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. I'm starting in catalog view. As you probably know, if you have a photo here in the catalog view and you wanna look at it full screen, you can double click that photo and it'll of course fill the screen. And if you wanna to return to catalog view, you can just click catalog, but there's actually a different and frankly quicker way to do that. And that is if you've got that uh, photo already selected, you can just hit the space bar and it will go ahead and full screen that for you. You can hit the space bar again to minimize it. Let's say you've hit the space bar and you've got a photo up and you wanna scroll through some photos. You can use the left and right arrow keys to scroll through the photos pretty quickly and rapidly going left or right with the various arrow keys. And once again, you can just hit space bar to return you back to the catalog view. In catalog view, if I wanna search for something specific, I can type command F and that'll bring up the search bar. Let's say I wanna look for something from Iceland. There it is and I can click on that and it found two items that had Iceland in the title. Now let's say you got a photo highlighted and you wanna go into the presets menu. You can of course go up here and click presets, but you can also just hit the T key as in Tom and it'll take you straight to the preset menu. If you wanna to return to the catalog view, you can just hit L as in library and that will take you back to the catalog view. Now, if you're in this catalog view and you wanna go straight to edit, you can of course just hit the E key, which will take you to the edit view. Or again, if you wanna to return to catalog view, just hit L and it will take you right back. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna select this photo. I'm gonna hit E to go into edit and share a few tips and tricks and some hotkeys that I use in the edit menu to help me edit more efficiently. The first one is in develop raw, I like to look at camera profiles. These offer alternative interpretations of the raw data, which can have a profound impact on your starting point for your editing journey. And these are only available on raw files. You can download additional camera profiles from various places on the internet. You'll just have to Google that. But you can see, you can come in here and find some really nice looks like this camera landscape, which maybe I wanna to apply to the photo. And it gives me a much better starting point. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm editing is to have the histogram available. If you don't have the histogram available, just go to view and show histogram. There it is, it's gone. And so I can just click on view, show histogram, and it will appear. It's a really, really useful tool for essentially managing the light and helping you understand how the light is affected as your edits progress. Now, one of the things that comes up a lot for me in looking at the histogram is I wanna look at what's all the way to the left. In other words, what's really, really dark in shadow or complete black and what's all the way to the right, which is maybe blown out highlights. This photo has quite a few blown out highlights. And so that's one of the reasons I like to use the histogram because it gives me a good vi visual representation of that. But you may notice there's two little dots here. These two little dots you can actually click on and it'll, uh, the left one, of course, is for shadows and the right one is for highlights. And as soon as I click it, you'll see I get an overlay on my photo indicating these are all the areas with blown out highlights. Now, the alternative way to do that is just to hit the J key, J as in Jim, hit the J key, and that will, of course, give you that same overlay and it automatically activates both of those. I find that to be a quicker way to do it. Now, anything in red is a blown out highlight and anything in blue, which is not showing here, is basically a crushed shadow. Let me drop these blacks all the way and you will see if it's in blue, it's a crushed shadow. And so that gives you a good visual representation. And uh, in this case, I need to drop the highlights quite a bit. And I'm just gonna drop them negative 100. And you can see I've got much better control of my highlights. Not perfect, some of it's just remaining completely blown out, but it's way, way better than it was before. So that J key is a great visual representation of the light in the image uh, applied as a red overlay for my highlights to help me manage those better. So maybe I'll come in and do a little bit of an edit here where I just need to maybe adjust certain parts of the photo. Let's say something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the J key to turn it off. And I've got a much better looking photo. One of the things I like to do is to check my edit and look at the before and after. And that's where the backslash key comes in. If you hit the backslash key, hold it down. You can see that's the before. Let go of the backslash key and that's the after. Now there's another way I like to do a before and after and that is this little sliding window at the bottom. You can click that sliding window and that will give you the ability to move this back and forth. And of course you can hit that icon again to remove it. But there's a quicker way to do that and that's with the semicolon key. If you hit semicolon, it'll bring that up automatically. And uh, that's just a little bit quicker way to get that sliding window. And you can hit semicolon again to hide it. Now another thing I like to do is zoom into my photo when I'm editing just to check on certain aspects of the photo. 
And a great way to jump to 100% is just to hit the space bar. And as you can see down below, it says it's now at 100%. And uh, then I can use my two finger swipe, and this is on a Mac, to kind of move around inside the photo. And whenever I'm happy with that, I can just hit the space bar again to return back to the kind of fit screen mode, which is at 49%, as you can see in the bottom of my screen. However, sometimes you want to go more than 100%. And while you can do that with this menu down here, you can see the different options. One of the things I like to do is hit Command and Plus, and that will just start zooming in every time. I'm continuing to hold down Command, by the way. Every time I hit the Plus, it's just zooming in more and more. And then again, I can move around within the photo to go check certain aspects of it. And the opposite is also true, which is hold down Command and hit the minus key to start backing out. Or if you're finished looking at it, of course, you can hit the space key to return to the fit screen mode. So that's a handy way to zoom in more than 100 to really get a closer look at your photo. Another thing I like to do is crop. And of course, you can go up here and click on crop if you want to. But if you prefer, there's a hot key, and that is just the C key, C as in Charlie, or crop. Just hit C, it'll open the crop menu, and you can kind of go do whatever it is you may want to do to the photo. In this case, I'm going to use 16 by 9, and I'll hit enter to go ahead and apply that crop, and my crop is applied. Now, the other thing that's useful is when you're editing, let's say I want to add structure, maybe you want to get to a certain number and you're struggling to get to that exact number, like maybe I'm having trouble landing right on 50. Well, of course, you can drag the slider and you can try to get it right there. You can also just type. You can just highlight the number, type in 50, hit enter, and it will automatically go to the number that you've selected. If for some reason you decide you don't like that number and you want to reset it, you've got a couple of different ways you can reset it. You can, of course, type that again and just go to zero, and that will take you to zero. Or if you're up here and you want to reset it, you can just double click on the little slider itself that ball, if you will, that little circle that's on the uh, editing, you can double click it or you can actually just double click on the word amount in this case. Double click there, resets it to zero as well. That gives you quick and easy control for resetting and of course making further refinements and adjustments. And those are just some of my quick little tips that I like to use, hotkeys and things like that that just make me more efficient in terms of my editing in Luminar. Hope it helps my friends. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, showing different hot keys and tips and tricks that I like to use. Leave that down below. I'll be back soon. You guys take care. And until the next video, adios.